Good evening, everyone. Actually, it's not only the Israeli war crimes, you know, uh, perpetrators that we're trying to um, bring to uh, the dog, it's uh, the international community as well. Um, it's always time to um, be one of the last speakers, a lot of things have already been said. Um, I'll start with, by reminding you of a few recent events that happened um, in Israel. Three days ago, Netanyahu announced that he could never share Jerusalem and Israel would never go back to the 67 borders. Uh, which means that from now on, every time you hear a peace process or peace negotiations, you can switch the TV on off. Um, recently as well, um, Israel has agreed to a 10 months freeze of the settlements. But if you read the media and Haaretz, for example, you can every week pretty much there's new buildings being built in East Jerusalem, in the West Bank. So um, it's all uh, it's all. Um... Recently as well, Israel has um, killed three unarmed um, members of the Palestinian resistance in Nablus. And Nablus is in area A, which is known as the full Palestinian Authority control, and killing unarmed civilians is also a war crime. It's called targeted assassinations. Israel also now um, imprisoned peace activists, two peace activists who stopped the war, Jamal Juma and Mohammed Othman were imprisoned. I heard yesterday Jamal Juma was released, but Mohammed is still in jail. Um, Abdallah Abu Rame from Bilain is also still in jail, um, as well as about um, 9,000 or 10,000 Palestinian political prisoners. So I think our, gov our government should actually, and the PA as well, should call for the release of those 10,000 political prisoners and shouldn't accept to have 100 prisoners released every, every 10 years. For those political prisoners have got nothing to do in Israeli jails. Uh, last thing I want to say, Israel has bombed Gaza a bit a year ago, but the bombing continues uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, recently, um, two Gazans were killed, I think, last week as well. And um, it, so it's, it's really continuing. It's not something that you know, happened once in a while. It's every day, every week, and um, it goes on and on. So what, what the international community, I mean, the so-called international community does, um, I say so-called because the international community at the moment is, is everyone sort of following the, uh, the US. And um, the international community, I mean, the EU issues statements. That's, that's it. The US um, issues veto. That's it. Egypt uh, built a metal wall that is actually um, that was designed in Israel and is being built in the States. And Egypt as well um, attacks aid convoys, like the Giva Palestinian convoys, Gaza Freedom March, etc. David Miliband wants to change, I mean, it's been said before, wants to change the law on, on in universal jurisdiction. And David Cameron recently said at the um, Conservative Friends of Israel annual dinner, the belief, the belief I have in Israel is indestructible, and you need to know that if I become Prime Minister, Israel as a friend will never turn his back on Israel. It seems like the only support um, Cameron ever gives to the Palestinians is when he goes to me at uh, Cafe Maramia on the um, Golden Road in, um, in London. So I think that it, it, it really is only us, the people, to actually support and, and support the Palestinians. And that's, that's, where, that's where the tribunal comes. We really think that for the people to act and to be spurred into action, there's a very deep education process that has to be done. We know the media, corporate media, does not his job and does not educate people. So it's down to us to educate the people. It's down to us to join more Viva Palestinas, more free Gaza movement, more Gaza Freedom March, and it's down to us to you know, not remain silent and stand in solidarity with the Palestinians. So, to talk briefly about the tribunal itself, we think that to educate the people, to also have a credibility, we need to be based on international law and we need to work with the best legal minds available. So that's what we've been doing for the last two years. 
Um, the, the, really, the best lawyers around in the UK are working with us. Uh, Fiat China, Daniel, Nakova, Portra, etc. And it's the same all around Europe where we've established national committees that support the initiative. So we've got two events coming up. Actually, one big event coming in Barcelona, which is the first international session of the Russell Tribunal that will focus on EU and its member states' complicities and responsibilities in Israel and Palestine. We need everyone's support and we intend to have a strong UK delegation uh, to attend the Barcelona session that will take place on the 1st to the 3rd of March. So media people, MPs, activists, we need everyone down in Barcelona in March. The next session will be in London and once more we need everyone's support to make this the best session as possible. We need to support charities, of NGOs and of every activist as possible. So if you want to get in touch, we've got a website, russeltrainonpalestine.com, we've got a Facebook group, and I've got five business cards that I can give five people. What about military recruiting? So I'll conclude by saying that we really hope that once properly informed, the public will be spurred into action, and we hope that the public will understand that what's happening in Palestine concerns us all. It's not about Palestine, it's about us as a human civilization, so we hope that we can build uh, a better future uh, by um, staying in solidarity with the Palestinians. Thank you.